get started. Tim, would you mind opening us in prayer? Father, thank you for this gathering. They give us. Please keep our minds and hearts open to receive this word. We have Pastor Joel teaching the class tonight. And keep your hands on all So many things. Amen. All right. It's the last week. How many of you guys are looking forward to a nice long break? <coughs> Oh, see, you're not supposed to say that, Linda. You're supposed to say, no, we want to keep going. We want to keep going. <laughs> we just What's don't want next? to come all the way out here. <laughs> I know. All right, so uh, so this is the last week. Uh, over the last seven classes, we talked about uh, different methods for getting started in studying the Bible. Uh, talked about... Uh, studying specific books, uh, so we've been working through Mark uh, during this time, and what do we get, maybe three or four chapters in, right? Um, and, you know, so we talked about the inductive method, kind of just reading the words on the page, uh, trying to get a, a picture of what the book is talking about. We talked about the topical method, we looked at the thematic methods, uh, and Again, trying to just wrap our heads around what is the author of this particular book trying to tell us what he's trying to say. Um, and what he's trying to tell us about God through this book. Because we know that 66 books of the Bible is, is God's story. But we want to know what, what this particular author is, is talking about within God's story. Um, so tonight, we're going to actually work a little bit through uh, what we call the biographical method. So uh, on your papers, you'll actually see we've got, oh, a hundred and almost 130, maybe a little more than 130 names. Uh, so you'll see a list of prominent women of the Bible, a uh, list of prominent men, and then uh, minor but important men of the Bible. So people that show up just a little bit, people that uh, we might still be curious about. So we might be curious about Caiaphas, who was the high priest when Jesus was uh, crucified. We might uh, be interested maybe in Barnabas, um, who was you know, one of the missionaries that went out with uh, uh, Paul might be interested in uh, John the Baptist. We really only read a little bit about John the Baptist in the Gospels and not many other places. He's mentioned a couple of other places in the New Testament, but not many. But prophecy about him is mentioned quite a bit in the Old Testament. Uh, so there are all kinds of different uh, people that we might be interested in learning a little bit about. Uh, I know a lot of people like to, to learn about Esther and Ruth, uh, and uh, you know, a couple of the other women, Sarah, uh, Rebecca even, uh, maybe even the Queen of Sheba. Uh, we hear about her in, uh, when, you know, we'll deal with Solomon, but who was she? Why was it important that she came to Solomon and sought his wisdom? Uh, so again, we're kind of looking at this uh, more biographical method, so we're kind of getting out of one book, and, and we might be looking throughout Scripture for some of these people. So the first thing we do is we just choose somebody. We choose one person that we want to learn a little bit more about, and this doesn't necessarily have to take a long time, but depending on the person that you choose, uh, you might be spending a, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, depending on what, uh, how deeply you want to get into their lives. Uh, depending on how much you can find in Scripture. So after you choose a person, we're going to uh, go ahead and use uh, some of the tools that we have at our disposal, like a concordance, uh, to find all of the places where that person uh, is mentioned in Scripture. We're going to read through those passages where it talks about who they are, and we're going to look at a whole bunch of questions 
that we want to maybe answer about these people. So if you take a look after number five, there's a list of 70 questions to choose from, depending on what we want to learn about this person. So the first six questions have to do with their reputation. Who wrote what was written about this person? And what did they think about her? What did they read about her? Uh, or write about her? Did they have enemies? Did they have friends? Did they have family that we read about in Scripture? Then there's some questions on the background. There's, uh, looks like about 10 or 11 questions on their background. Can we figure out anything about their ancestry? Who were their parents, grandparents, sons, daughters? Where did they live? What was their everyday life like? And again, we can use a lot of the different uh, tools at our disposal. We've got the library uh, here at the church. Uh, we can use the Logos software uh, or maybe even the eSword software, if that's what you downloaded, to learn more about what life was like for that person. Uh, so kind of get a background, an idea of uh, where they lived, how they lived, did they have an occupation, you know, what was their daily life like? What were their relationships like? Uh, again, did they have children? Did they have friends? Did they have enemies? Uh, what kinds of things can we learn about that person based on how they related to other people? What was their personality? Uh, you know, were they, a, would we consider them a good person or an evil person? Would we consider them, uh, people of strong character, and if so, what made their character strong? Uh, what made, what were their weaknesses? Were there any particular sins that they uh, had written about them in Scripture? And then what are the significant events of their lives, right? And some of them are not going to have many significant events. They might only have one significant events. So we, we read about uh, Balaam and his donkey. And basically all we know about Balaam and his donkey is that God told Balaam not to say anything bad about Israel and Balaam kept doing that over and over and over again. Uh, so this is just this one period of time where the, uh, the enemy, the leader of the enemy, asked him to give an oracle saying that he would beat Israel. And Balaam kept refusing and kept refusing. Well, why? Why did he do that? So we look at those significant events. Uh, we can even think about well, were, they, were these events successful? Were they not successful? Uh, depending on you know, how you want to look at success, right? Uh, and then there are tests of character. Some of, some, uh, some of these uh, people, uh, like David, we know a lot about. There's so much written about David in Scripture, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And we also learn about how, he, uh, how his character was tested and how sometimes he, uh, you know, his, his character is held strong. And sometimes his character fell really, really hard, like with Bathsheba. So we're going to ask all of those questions. And then um, if you look at the second to the last page, you're going to see a list of character qualities. Maybe that you can look at to, to just kind of get an idea, get some, get some uh, thoughts flowing. Well, was this person enthusiastic? Were they a person of faith? Were they merciful? Were they righteous? Uh, were they not? And there's a list of negative character qualities. Were they a busybody? Were they argumentative? Uh, were they impulsive? You know, when I study Peter, that's the first word that comes to my mind for, for Peter, is impulsive. He really didn't think before he spoke very much. He just wanted to uh, prove that he was doing the right thing, but sometimes he wasn't. So we kind of take all of these things into account, and we can uh, literally write a little bit of a biography about a person in Scripture.
and we can do that by ourselves. Each of you might have somebody different that you would be interested in studying, or we can do it as a group if a group wanted to study a certain person, especially a more significant person, somebody that there's a lot written about. Um, you could get together as a group and each of you take a, you know, some aspect of this person's life and, and learn about him and then come together as a group and talk about what these different pieces are when they're put together. So that is the biographical method and that's what we're going to work on tonight. And I'm going to give you the option either to work individually you really want to study somebody, you want to just work on your own, you can. If you want to continue working in your groups and your group can agree on a person that you might want to uh, do some study on, you can do that. Uh, obviously, the library is open. Uh, whatever reference books you want to take out of there, and I'm sure that there might even be some uh, already written biographies, ideas that other people have already come up with. Uh, based on the lives of some of these people. Check the library and see what, uh, what other people are saying. It might make it a little easier to, uh, to do that learning. Who has questions? I see puzzlement on faces. All right. So I'm going to give you guys um, about 40 minutes or so. Uh, decide if you want to work as a group or by yourself. If you want to work, work by yourself, you can pull out some more tables or you can go to a different area of the, the hall or a different area of the church if you want to. Um, but then at about 7.30 or so, we'll come back and kind of finish up uh, talking about where we go from here. <laughs> How many of you could use another hour? <laughs> How many of you could use another two hours? All right. So, table to the right. What? Uh, who? Who did you choose to study for a while? Jacobed. Jacobed. And we couldn't find a whole lot on her. Interesting. Who was Jacobed? Moses' mother. Moses' mother. Okay. So what, what did you find? Well, Abram married his father's sister, Jacobin. Okay? And um, Jacobin was the mother of Moses. And she nursed baby Moses, got her from the um, Pharaoh's daughter that found, you know, mm -hmm. found her in the type of water. And she took him, nursed her own, her own baby. While the other um, boys were being killed, she hid him in the water. Um, three children. She was a very caring mother of the tribe of Levi. They lived in Egypt. Um, prayed for her faith in God. She had six grandchildren. The name Jacobed means Jehovah is glory. Okay. She was a wise woman and God fearing. She birthed three leaders of, of uh, Israel. Israel. Yeah, one of the leaders. Mary, Moses, and Aaron. Um, she took care of her family and her relationship. Um, it all turned out great. She took care of Moses and educated him. Raised Moses to be the Israelite. She believed in the God. Um, Test of character. She didn't give up easily. She wasn't discouraged. She had many positive qualities on this list that we have. And um, she was a very good mother. Find else. Couldn't find anything else about Jacobet. All right. She did her thing. She did her thing. All right. So yeah, it's uh, you, 
even though she doesn't have a whole lot written about her. Uh, it's like, you know, there was, she was a pretty prominent woman in the Bible, right? Moses' mother, that's, that's got to be, that's got to be worth something. Important role. Yeah. All right. Table to my left. Who did you guys study for 45, 50 minutes? They're not going to tell me. Yes. Gideon. Gideon. All right. So Gideon, he was, uh, so he was on our list of less or minor but important men of the Bible. So what, uh, what did you learn about Gideon? One of the 13 judges that are listed in. Okay, so he was a judge. Uh, he started out as a, as a farmer, carrying the uh, uh, livestock. Okay. To feed his family. Okay, so started out as a farmer. What else did you get? Well, they were hiding from the Israelites, were hiding from the Midianites. They were just wreaking havoc on everything. So he was, he said, he was doing the wheat in the in the wine press. So they didn't know he was there. Okay. And then uh, uh, an angel of the Lord came to him and uh, said to uh, that he would call on him to save these people. How did he uh, react to that? Well, he, uh, <laughs> not very well at first. Yeah. No. No. He, thought he was. He, his tribe was the weakest tribe, and he was the, the, the youngest. The youngest of the tribe, so he wasn't didn't think that he was capable of leading. All right. And I think he, and he also whined a little bit that yeah. you know that that, that uh, you know God. Our fathers said that God promised us all this stuff, and He's not even around. He's not even he, He's uh, he bailed on us. Okay. And, and then that's when the angel of the Lord said, "Aren't I here sending you?" Mm -hmm. And I guess he maybe a little light went off. Yeah. So how did it all end up? Well. Um, it ended up well, I guess, till till the end when then he took all the he took all the gold, or just he just asked for one piece of gold from each like an earring from each person that plundered somebody, mm -hmm. and uh, but he made an effort, and it wasn't it wasn't to uh, I guess to worship the Lord. It was more that he did this because he wanted to show. Oh, everything that Israel did, and uh, even though he had a good life, uh, it didn't end well for his sons, his seventy sons, because uh, the one he had to one of the concubines when he died said, "Well, so went to his mother and says, and says, so do you want to be uh, governed by, ruled by the seventy brothers, or just you know?" And they said, "Yeah, we don't want to do that." So they went and killed them all. Ah, all right. So not not the happy ending that uh, no. that uh, Larry the cucumber would have us believe, <laughs> right? We all remember Gideon and, and his what was it the the magic flashlight, right? In uh, in uh, Veggie Tales. No. All right. So uh, was it difficult finding information? Was it easier finding information once you went to the library and started looking some things up? All right. <laughs> so yeah, so the so a lot of people have have studied a lot of these people, um, and it just depends really on what it is what it is that you want to know. And we we do these studies not just because we want to know oh who is this person in the Bible. We do biographical studies because. Hopefully, by studying what people in the Bible did, we can kind of get an idea of who we are as 
believers, who we are as, as followers of Christ, who we are as children of God. Because when we, when we read these passages, when we read these scriptures, a lot of times we'll be able to see ourselves in at least something of a lot of these characters, the good characters and the bad. And to be able to study those people means that we can actually join our story to the stories of those people in the Bible. We can, we can, we can relate. They become human beings, right? And that's tough sometimes. When we're in Sunday school, we learn about Daniel and the lion's den. And, you know, basically what we learn is Dan Daniel did what God wanted, and he got in trouble for it, and God saved him from the lions, right? But there was a lot more to Daniel than just the lion's den, right? And, you know, some people are surprised that, uh, you know, we, we have sayings like, you know, the writings on the wall. Well, that comes from Daniel, right? All of a sudden, this disembodied whatever started writing on a wall that this party was happening at, and they called Daniel, and he read the writing on the wall and told them that it was bad news for them, right? So now when we use that term, I can see the writing on the wall, and know, oh, this might not end so well, right? But we're able to, to kind of relate to these people on a human level as opposed to just, oh, well, I, I can't possibly be like Daniel. I can't possibly be like David. Right? Except we can. Because David sinned just like we sin. David had weaknesses and fears. Um, you know, David did some things maybe that weren't um, necessarily approved by God. But then he also repented. He also went back to God and said, Yes, I'm, you know, I, I know that what I did was wrong. And he sought forgiveness, which is what we do. So as you're, as you're looking at these different people in the Bible, think about who they are in relation to who you are. And, you know, some of you know a lot of these names on this list. Some of you don't know many of them. You know, who were they? What did they do? What was their faith like? And how does it relate to my faith? Not compare to my faith. How does it relate to my faith? So that's uh, a, a pretty significant reason why we do studies of biographies of people. All right, I've got one more handout for you guys. This is your encouragement handout. It's called The Next Journey. And there's also some stuff on the back and appendix on the back that will help you to maybe hopefully remember some of the things that we've done over the last eight weeks. So, you have completed the Discipleship 101 Exploring the Bible course, but this is not the end. In fact, this is hopefully for you to just the beginning of a lifelong journey of Bible exploration because there are 65 more, well, there's about 10, uh, 12 more chapters in Mark that you could study. And then there's 65 more books in the Bible, right? Some of them are very short. Some of them are only 20, 30 verses long. Some of them are 60, 66 chapters long. And... What my prayer is for you is that each time you open the Bible, you're not just opening it to read it, you're opening it to understand who God is and who you are in God and in the kingdom. And uh, on, the, uh, on the back we've got, so this is uh, how to do a chapter study. Um, remember when we were doing those... Uh, drawings on the page, if that's something that you want to do. Uh, these are just some suggestions of, of things that you can put together. Uh, you can use what we call
call in school graphic organizers, uh, these little charts that would help you to uh, identify different sections of scripture. Uh, there's a section here on word studies of the Bible. Uh, and again, it kind of tells you, uh, kind of goes through what a word study is, uh, how to use a concordance, uh, how to understand how uh, Greek or Hebrew words work. And again, when you get into those kind of things, if you have a software like uh, eSword or Logos, um, they have a lot of information on the Greek and Hebrew words, what they mean, how they fit together. Uh, so again, this is one of those things that, um, that you can use, a tool that you can use. And, and there's this disclaimer at the bottom. Um, again, just know that the things that we've covered, uh, even, even looking up the, so you looked up the, the term Jacobed and determined what the name was through a concordance, a concordance or through something else. Uh, one of the things that I always <laughs> like to encourage, even though most people laugh at me, uh, is learn a little bit of Greek. Learn a little bit of Hebrew. Uh, at least some of, the, some of the big words like Jehovah. What does is, what is, what is Jehovah mean in the Hebrew? Um, because it's actually, it's, it's a couple of different smaller words put together. And when you put them together, it means a certain thing. Um, again, most of us don't have time to learn Greek or Hebrew, but there are classes available, even free classes, that can help you at least get started in those things. And that is everything that I am going to be able to teach you in this class, uh, and hopefully you noticed I didn't do a whole lot of teaching. I let you guys teach yourselves. Uh, and again, this is what we would do if we were in small groups. Uh, I want to encourage you to consider maybe either starting a small group in your own home or attending a small group in somebody else's. And, uh, continue working through scripture. In the spring, um, I am uh, thinking about putting together um, a class on um, the four views of the book of Revelation. And because uh, there are, there are four primary ways that people read Revelation. And depending on the way you read it, that book is going to mean different things. To you. Yes, it's mind-blowing, uh, but that one will be a uh, uh, partly a video study, so there's a video uh, series that goes along with it, uh, and then there's a study component to it uh, where we will discuss uh, the different views and what they mean. Uh, so that's going to probably be after Easter uh, when we do that, and I'm not sure how long that will be. It might be same length, it might be short, slightly shorter, uh, but we'll take a look at an overview of the book of Revelation, which a lot of people tell me they would love to learn more about, because it's a very confusing book. Um, a lot of imagery, a lot of different things going on there. All right, let us uh, close in prayer, and then I'll let you guys out a couple of minutes early. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, we thank you for this time that uh, we can gather fellow Christians, fellow family members in Christ who uh, faithfully attended these classes each week, faithfully did work uh, in your word to learn a little bit more about who you are and who we are in you. Father, I ask as they uh, leave here tonight that they might consider uh, becoming a part of a smart, uh, small group starting a small group. Uh, ask that you would uh, open the hearts and minds of all of the people here at Morning Hour. Uh, help them to uh, feel your call to study your word more closely. We ask all these things in Jesus' name.